So NBC News reported yesterday that there's an outbreak among um, uh, children and adolescents of mumps. Uh, and they found that 94% uh, were fully vaccinated, at least, you know, at least two vaccines. So scientists are baffled and now they're suggesting uh, there should be a third vaccine. Uh, not surprising to me at all. Uh, you know, I could cite dozens of universities. Uh, the one on top of my head I can remember is uh, University of Illinois at um, Urbana-Champaign, I think is how you say it. 60 recently, you know, past few years, 69 uh, students got the mumps and I believe it was 67 were fully vaccinated and the same thing scientists said well we might need a booster a third booster <laughs> uh, if it sounds familiar uh, that's all I can say about it on this channel uh, if you want I'm gonna dive deeper in it I'm gonna make a video of the same name on my other channel uh, blue collar Catholic on rumble uh, I'm gonna give you the data and uh, the scientists that are not baffled by this and uh, their scientific data that they report that will help you understand why they're not baffled. <laughs> but uh, I'm Lord willing, I'm going to get that video up today, and it'll be the same title as this. It'll be a blue collar Catholic on Rumble. But until then, if you just sample a few of my videos on there, you'll see why I'm not surprised <laughs> at all. But you know, I'm no doctor, but I, uh, you know, I, I've been kicked in the head a lot. <laughs> it's, it sounds funny, but if you, if you follow me, you know, I, I grew up in the inner city, a lot of gang fights. You know, when you're on the losing end, you know, you get kicked in the head, literally, you know, people kick you in the head. And so I know my brain isn't the way God designed it to be, but there's a part of my brain that still really works well. And um, it's a part that just desires truth. I just really desire truth. You know, back in the day when I first moved to Florida, uh, you know, I got with a, a group of like-minded, health-minded people. We, we both, you know, we all kind of felt the same way about natural health with our children and, and with ourselves. And I would say I was probably the only conservative politically and conservative Christian. Most people were like in the spirituality or either atheism or, uh, you know, just non-religious. And, um, but on health issues, we agreed. And I was able to convince a few of them. A few of them tried to convince me of their ways, which they couldn't. Um, but, you know, I, I learned some good things. I learned some, you can learn truth from other people that, you know, don't believe the truth about Jesus or the truth about our religion. But, uh, you know, one of the things I remember is a story about a Shaolin monk. And his student said to him, teacher, how do I find truth? And the Shaolin monk grabbed the kid by the hair and stuck his head under, the, under a pond. You know, they were by a pond. Stuck his head under the water for like a minute. And the kid's fighting and fighting. And, and literally was there for like a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And finally, the Shaolin monk pulled the kid up. And the kid like was terrified and could hardly breathe. Once he caught his breath, he said, teacher, why did you do that to me? And the teacher said, when you desire truth, as much as you desire to breathe, you'll find truth. And there's something in me where I got to know the truth. That's why my wife always says when I ask you a question, you know, I ask you the time and you build me a clock. <laughs> She's like, just answer the question. But I got to tell her how I got to that answer. I got to give her all the details and, and everything about it could be the most simple subject, but I got to know everything about it. It's just something the way my brain works. And um, so, you know. The proof is in the pudding. You know, years ago in the 50s, doctors used to say Jack LaLanne was dangerous. His exercises are too vigorous. It's dangerous. These were the same doctors. You could Google them smoking cigarettes saying four out of five doctors recommend camels. <laughs> and uh, the proof is in the pudding. At age 60, Evander Holyfield, one of the uh, best fighters of all time, and he was in his top physical condition. Uh, met Jack LaLanne just to do his morning workout that Jack LaLanne does every morning. And he said he couldn't finish it. He said it was so intense and so hard. Jack LaLanne at age 60, I seen him on Johnny Carson do uh, a thousand push-ups in a clip. So the proof is in the pudding. So I look at, you know, I, I heard something once said, uh, it might, and it might again be a Chinese thing. Um, 
never go to a doctor who's in worse shape than you. <laughs> you know, I, I've been to the doctors that are overweight, drinking a soda, eating a cupcake, and I'm like, nah, I, I'm not going to ask you about my health. But anyway, um, the proof is in the pudding. You know, I called the naturopathic doctor that I knew when I was diagnosed with, with type 2 diabetes. He gave me a simple, free way to reverse it, and I did. I made a video about that, you know. And now, all of a sudden, you know, people know about it. But he's, he's known about this for 60 years. Literally, he's been curing di type 2 diabetes with simple intermittent fasting, you know. And I've seen him cure people of a lot of stuff that their doctor said was incurable. But like I said, I talk more about that on my Rumble channel, so check that out. But truth is truth. And this is why I became a Christian. You know, I, I looked at all the religions. I looked at atheism. And Christianity, Christianity is logical. It's reasonable. Our faith isn't based on blind faith. Our faith is based on evidence. And when you compare the evidence of Christ's claims to the evidence of any other religious leader or any atheist leader, you've got to come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. He is the truth. And, you know, it took me some time as a, as a Christian to realize that he established one church, Matthew 16, 18 through 19. Clearly, he established one church, not multiple churches, one church. And the only church in history that can prove its lineage back to that time is the Catholic Church. You know, we know the Lutheran Church was started by Luther. The Baptist Church was started by John Smith. You know, uh, the Southern Baptists broke off over slavery. They wanted slaves. You know, the Methodist Church was started by um, um, uh, John and Charles Wesley. The uh, Presbyterian by John Knox, based on another man's teaching, John Calvin. So the only church that was started by Jesus was the Catholic Church, and it makes me laugh when people make comments and say stuff like, oh, you can't uh, back up Catholicism with the Bible. I'm like, that's really funny, since it was the Catholic Church that decided which books would be in the Bible based on Catholic tradition at the councils of Rome, Hippo, and Carthage, 382, 393, and 397 A.D., it's really funny. <laughs> um, so anyway, you know, some people have the gift to explain these things. And I have a great guest Saturday, Steve Ray. He's going to explain it well. If you're a Protestant evangelical, I encourage you to watch it. And, and then the following week, December 11th, he's going to be at our church, St. Thomas Aquinas in St. Cloud, Florida. I, if you're around, please come and see this man speak. He's incredible. And he's another guy that just desires the truth. You know, he was a former Baptist, became Catholic. I was a Baptocostal, Assemblies of God and Baptist. <laughs> I took what I thought was the best of both worlds. But um, anyway, we all have different gifts and God calls us in different ways, but he calls all of us. He commands all of us to go and win souls. If you're a baptized Catholic, it's your responsibility to win souls. But don't be something you're not, you know? God creates us all different. My wife, she does not like con confrontation. She does not like to, to tell people what to do. But she's a very loving woman with a lot of gifts. And she cooks better than Bobby Flay. I mean, she's like the best chef in the world. And, you know, she'll bring meals to people. And she truly ministers to them with her food, you know? Because they know she's doing it out of love. You know, there was a saint that said, you know, preach the gospel at all times. And if you need to speak. So we love the people into the kingdom of God. You know, one of the, the, the most influential men in my life, bringing me back to the Catholic Church, was after my dad passed away, my mom remarried a devout Catholic. But he was completely opposite of me. This guy was an engineer. He was like real analytical, real serious, never talked. But one day I was trying to win him to Christ because I didn't think Catholics were saved. And he said, well you, well, you don't believe the Bible. And I'm like, yes, I do. And he's like, well, Jesus said, this is my body. <laughs> and, and, um, and God used him. He never, like, preached at me hard. But when I attacked him, he, like, did a judo throw and flipped me. And uh, he got me on my search, you know, towards Catholicism. So whatever your gift is, you know, 
I have, again, like I'm so excited to have Steve Ray. And also I'm going to announce another guy that's going to be coming on. We just don't have the date. And he's equally as awesome as Steve Ray in, in uh, teaching the gospel. And just like Steve Ray and myself, he was a former evangelical. You might have seen him on YouTube. His name is Keith Nestor. And uh, we, we, we kind of emailed each other. We haven't talked yet, but we're going to talk soon. I'm looking forward to it. And this guy is the real deal, down to earth, genuine. But he's very gifted. And he's very humble, but he knows a lot. He, you know, he was in full-time ministry for t- over 20 years. Really smart guy, but he doesn't come off, you know, like a know-it-all. He comes off as just excited, you know. Super cool dude. Keith Nestor, we're going to try and get him on probably January because December is like packed full of things going on here. Uh, but I encourage you to check him out. Keith Nestor, uh, Steve Ray, uh, and listen to these intelligent men explain why you should be Catholic. And if you are Catholic, you should stay Catholic. But whatever your gift is, use it for the glory of God. You know, seek truth like that kid wanted to get air whose head was under the water. Ask God to put that in your heart, you know. And you may be a writer. You may need to write. You, you, you may be a musician, play music, whatever you do. There's God created you to be the best you you can be. He didn't create you to be Steve Ray or Keith Nestor. Created you to be you. And if you just ask God, God is real. You know, his gifts are real. His power is real. You know, ask him to show you in a real way how he wants to use you in the new evangelization. It's going on right now. Jesus could come back tomorrow. He can come back a thousand years from now. We don't know. That's not our concern. But we got to preach like he's coming back today and save, bring as many people with us to heaven. That's what we're called to do, man. You know, all this other stuff, you know, I'm into health and, you know, I, you know, I brag, I get out, I'm 56 and I'll outwork any 23 year old you put in my truck with me. So I'll be slinging cases 15 hours and they'll be dead after 10. <laughs> but you know what? This body's going to fade away. This is only temporal. You know, we got to take care of our bodies It's you know, temple of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, even St. John says he wishes us good health and prosperity. So, you know, we should strive to be healthy. But, um, Jack Lang's dead, you know. I hope he knew God and he's in heaven so I could, you know, chat with him when I make it there one day. Um, you know, so it's good to take care of your body. It's good to be involved in politics. But all that pales to our number one job, winning souls for Jesus Christ and knowing God. You want to know God because if you know God, it's you can introduce people to him. If you don't know God, how do you introduce him to him? You introduce him to a set of rules? People don't want rules. They want a relationship. And they can have a relationship through Jesus Christ. And you can bring them into the church that Jesus Christ himself established. And you can prove it through history. It's easy. Just look at the popes. We have an unbroken chain from Pope Francis to St. Peter. Catholic Church is the church that Jesus Christ himself started. So stay Catholic and God bless. And if you're buying or selling real estate, go to realestateforlife.org.